Well, folks, we're back with a, another AMA with Hearthstone developer Ixar, and not a lot of questions answered this time around, but uh, perhaps a lot to discuss on this first one. This one's going to take a little longer. The rest will be much quicker, but let's jump into it. So with this first question, it's about quest design philosophy and all the different versions of the quests. And Ixar laid out a lot here, which I'm going to do my best to summarize in a fair way, but of course... I would encourage you to check the link in the description to read this to make sure I'm representing these takes uh, fairly. So first and foremost is he thinks quests are successful from their design team's uh, point of view. That's why we keep doing them. That doesn't mean they come without downsides. I'm actually just curious to hear everybody's take on that right off the bat. Do you think quests overall have been a success? Maybe previous ones to the current batch feel like a success to you. Curious uh, where people land on that one. I'm somewhere in the middle, I think, kind of mixed. He then lays out that quests have two upsides. Uh, they give players goals that are pretty obvious and directed throughout a game plan. And then they also demand you build your deck in specific ways, which when powerful enough can can shake up the meta in some big ways. So I think this is where it gets a little more interesting. He, he goes on to say in Unguro, we made quests that were so powerful that you generally won the game when you completed them. Which, you know, I, I like the young girl quest. I don't I don't mean to be a detractor here. I, I don't feel like most of them, in my perspective, really captured that sentiment. I mean, I think the rogue quest certainly did. Like, you play that, you finish that, you're, you're going to cruise to victory. But there were so many others that didn't really do that at all. Now, maybe that's just a balance thing uh, as opposed to, like, a, an intent thing. But the young girl didn't feel that way to me at the very least. And then he says in Old Doom, essentially the quests were backed off a little bit so that the rewards weren't as powerful in game ending, but the quests were a little bit easier to complete, and he thinks that was a bit more successful. He goes on to say that in Stormwind, he thinks they followed the path they made in Old Doom. In other words, the quests that were easier to complete, but not as game ending. And I find this really interesting, uh, perplexing perhaps even, because I feel like the Stormwind quests far and away have rewards that are the most game ending of any rewards we've seen. Uh, Mage and Warlock are obviously the most prominent, Shaman as well. It's just like crazy how high powered the results and rewards are because they're, you know, total game effects and they just do bonkers crazy damage or set up doing crazy damage. And uh, I mean, even ones like Hunter, you know, that's maybe not quite as popular or successful, it's still just pumping out so much damage. It's Raza and Anduin Priest, basically. Uh, but in hunter form. So they all, or not all, but a, a vast majority of them seem like very game ending sorts of effects. So I guess I don't totally understand this perspective. It, to me, it feels like the Stormwind quests are actually the most game ending and they give you rewards along the way. So there's less sacrifice to be made as far as like getting the quest done. You're getting kind of step-by-step -step rewards, you're getting game-ending effects, they're not really all that challenging to complete in most cases, basically they seem to be like the best and most pushed versions of every characteristic that a quest line might have. Now of course to be fair there's a range across each of these different expansions, quest lines, some are better and more game-ending than others, so yeah, I'm just talking about sort of generals or averages or perspectives that I feel at least, and maybe there's some recency bias here, but to me the Stormwind quest seems to outshine the past ones uh, pretty dramatically and I you know I pulled up the old ones to look and make sure as well and man Stormwind quests are just insane compared to the previous quest lines or quests. So all in all I, I guess I'm coming at it from a different perspective but I, I will have to say despite uh, getting there in a different way I do agree with this this final take which is that quests do still have value they are polarizing indeed uh, but not every meta is supposed to be the same. Ixar says, I, I think that's fair, and different metas are going to cause problems and complaints uh, for different portions of the player base. So maybe some people hate quests now, but some other people might hate the next thing. Like if we get hero cards next set, those could feel the same way. Uh, <laughs> you know, ideally, we'd get in a world where nobody hates anything, but I don't think we live in that universe, unfortunately. There is one interesting additional point here I want to talk about is that Ixar says, one big downside of quests is that uh, they ask you to build your deck in a very specific way. And that has been true based on the way quests have been designed historically. Usually they're like related to keywords or some very specific deck building requirement. But I don't think that's necessarily a requirement. You could have a quest that just says like deal 20 damage to minions. And that could be achieved via removal cards and minion trades on boards and rush minions. So you might still be able to give players like a directed game plan that's not so restrictive from a deck building standpoint. 
And of course, I haven't tested that. I haven't broken that down, you know, how fun or, you know, easy to support that might be, those sorts of things. But uh, I think it would allow a little bit more flexibility and not make quests so linear and so solved in a way where the deck building's kind of done for you and all these packages are just propped up to support the quest. It would give people more open-endedness in how they want to achieve the quest and how they want to get there. Maybe there wouldn't be enough, you know, ways to slice a Hearthstone game. So I guess that's something to think about. Could you design 10 quests uh, that didn't demand really strict deck building and, and leave things a little more open-ended? I'm not sure, but uh, perhaps an interesting exercise to explore. All right, so that was where most of the discussion in this video is gonna lie. The rest of these are gonna be pretty quick. So Ixar here says, uh, Classic was cool, didn't last very long for popularity, but they want to add Nax and they're still settling on when to do that. Uh, we've heard this a lot, so clearly this is still something top of mind. Nax is, uh, Nax is out soon, perhaps. Question about cards coming to the core set if that's already being decided for next year. Not fully decided, but on the way to being decided. The interesting takeaway here is he mentions build arounds that they want to add into the core set. Now, I don't know what he means exactly by build arounds, but perhaps things like Highlander could be coming back into the core set. We could have another like Highlander year popping into Hearthstone, maybe some other hero cards, but they're at least looking for cards that are going to make big impact on the meta as a part of the core set, which I actually think is pretty cool to see cards like that come back into fashion. This is what I think could make people mad. Uh, talking about another card back specific to high ladder finishes, the question mentions top 200. Ixar says, we have another legend card back style, but they want to reserve it for players that hit rank one on ladder. So basically, uh, you know, just a handful of people at any given month would get access to this card back. Uh, Cause it's not easy to hit rank one, you know, getting to top 500, you know, I've, I've done that a few times, top 200, even a couple times. Rank one, though, I think would be far beyond my reaches. So this would be a very exclusive card back, which actually doesn't really bother me. I think that's kind of cool almost for games that have these rewards for super dedicated people. Sometimes I think we baby players a little too much. Like old school MMOs had these sorts of really exclusive items. And I thought it was cool to like want those and chase those. And it made the game a little bit more mysterious and fun. Uh, so this wouldn't bother me, but I know there are a lot of people who would be very upset that they couldn't complete uh, their collection without being very, very talented or very dedicated in Hearthstone. So, uh, of course, I respect any takes different than mine on this one. This question is a discussion about the Discover Pool and how it used to be uh, biased towards class cards. You're more likely to get class cards in Discover and whether that might be coming back. And I guess it's on the table. It sounds like they haven't really thought about it or talked about it, but it wasn't shut down at the very least as a possibility. So maybe we'd see a return to uh, the Discover Pools of old. Is that good or bad? I think there's less Discover. It might be okay, but man, sometimes the loops and absurd chains that existed could be problematic. So I have a feeling they won't take this route. Here's another question about a like rotating wild set, some mix between standard and wild with old expansions rotating, kind of like we have for arena and duels. Ixar says it keeps coming up and it's a real consideration at this point. They're not moving forward with anything, but they've talked about it some and uh, probably wouldn't be too expensive or hard for them to implement. So might be something they move towards. Don't get your hopes up too high, but uh, Blizzard's thinking about it. And I know a lot of people want this. I think I'd have some fun playing this as well. So sign me up. Question about Battlegrounds Cosmetics. It sounds like they have even more plans for Battlegrounds Cosmetics. There's already been a ton hit really rapidly uh, as they try to monetize Battlegrounds. He says they'd like to give you some for free. You could unlock more through perks or even be able to craft cosmetics through some sort of earned currency. We're still very much the infancy of Battlegrounds cosmetics. So uh, that's cool for Battlegrounds players if they can get these cosmetics without having to actually spend cash. I think that always freshens up and livens up the mode a little bit. So that would be a great change. For this one, battle ready decks are coming back. I honestly don't know if people liked these or not, but hey, it's another thing in the game. So uh, cool. And then finally here, a uh, question about really crazy, wacky card designs. Uh, Ixar mentions they had a card at one time that uh, was like, uh, restart the game into another game. And if you win, do X things, like nesting a game within a game or something, just really disruptive and world-changing Hearthstone card designs. Uh, that one was apparently too crazy, but they're always looking for cards that are uh, changing what you think Hearthstone can do. 
I think some of these are cool. They're not too disruptive or, uh, you know, completely out of left field. That Like Maestro was really hype and awesome. It's not played much, but still a really fun idea. So anything like that that uh, brings some extra life to the game is awesome. I want to see more stuff like that. So curious to see where they land. And there you go. That's it for this AMA. Uh, just not a lot of questions answered this time. Not a lot of big news. So uh, my apologies if this didn't feel extra compelling this time. I, I don't control the... <laughs> I don't control the AMAs, so I do my best. Uh, that said, the quest design stuff, I think, will lead to a lot of interesting discussion. So I'm very, very intrigued to hear what you guys have to say about quests. If you think they've uh, hit the mark, missed the mark. I, I feel like I loved the Ungirl quest, and I liked the Old Doom quest fairly well as well. But I'm not that big of a fan of the Stormwind quests. I think they just seem too straightforward and linear and uh, kind of force your hand a bit when it comes to building your deck out. So... I don't know. I, I'm not sure exactly why that is. I'd have to think a lot more about it and do a dedicated video on the topic. But for me, I guess quests have just gotten less fun over time. All that said, uh, look forward to reading all your thoughts. Thanks much as always for watching. And until next time, game on.